How did I get into this mess? That's far enough. You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix, right? What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. Hmm? Huh? But I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence. You are no longer worthy of your title. <laughs> I've had this dream before, some place, some time ago. As if this day was written into my destiny. Today, I'll stand in court as a lawyer. To prove a killer innocent. March 23rd, 9.43 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 3. Beep. Hello, this is Phoenix Wright. You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? Beep. <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. <laughs> now listen up. You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you. Ever. Maya. F Phoenix. I forget who this is. Phoenix. Phoenix. Is it... Is it Mia? Who's talking? I don't, I don't know whose voice to use. It is Mia. M Mia. M Maya. How's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, what, what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of times when you have to force your biggest smiles. B but you can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here, not anywhere. Ugh, it's that accursed on guard again. Beep! Will you leave me alone? Look, don't call me anymore. I mean it. You're really mean, pal. Ah, Gumshoe. I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? They let me join the investigation team. We're chasing after the killer, pal. I was gonna point this out before, but it's really weird that On Guard, like, unmasked himself standing in the courtroom where everyone can see. Like, there's clearly some, like, guards or whatever over there in the background who could have seen him reveal his true evil self. Hmm. Anyway. Then, you have some sort of lead? Sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on the guy. But we're not gonna give up. Come shoo. Until the trial is over, until the verdict is handed down, we're gonna do everything we can and find a killer. If you can get Maya out, then you can get on guard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true, I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? So you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. I have to make the trial last longer? If you go at Mr. Edge with everything you've got, then you two can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Edgeworth can do it. So, believe in us. We're gonna give it all we've got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. It's the strongest weapon in the world, and you have it in abundance. Yeah! <laughs>
Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through, I know it. March 23rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt Ongard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Interesting that Francis Franziska's not back today. Now, as I recall, we concluded yes yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being what exactly was Miss Adrian Andrews' role in this murder? That is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Mr. Edgeworth, if you would please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. Ongar. And then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which she cannot escape. Hmm, then you're saying that she is guilty after all? I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. Ooh, what is that? Looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. A assassin you say? Yes, Juan Corridor was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired the assassin, his client so to speak, is Matt Ongard. What a surprising turn of events. I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time. So I know that everything Edgeworth has said is true. But we still have to hold out as long as we can. At least, until Maya is safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. Prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Now then, witness. Your name and occupation, please. Uh, okay. I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's... I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him in a way. Yeah. Um, Mr. Powers, please, you don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, uh, sorry, well, but I'm just kind of a nothing sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? Y yes I... I didn't know that. Um, but you know... I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then. I would like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Ongard's room. Uh, okay, sure. <laughs> Visit to Matt's room. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. He was talking with someone. At first I thought it was the bellboy? I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Hmm... Nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Power's testimony. And talking with the bellboy is no big deal. If one assumes that the person Mr. Ongard was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy... What are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're just gonna have to charge in head first, right? Visit to Matt's room. Okay, so we want to know more about this bellboy, right? So we're gonna scroll forward, scroll forward. At first? What do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboyish uniform and he had a bottle of juice on a tray. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but... I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. 
And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. I'm sorry. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to wait patiently on this one. Hmm. You saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant, together, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? That's a perfectly normal thing to do. So, how long did you watch the two of them? Uh, not more than a minute or two, I think. We just gotta keep pressing until we get through, basically. Uh, are you sure that was Matt on guard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the Nickel Samurai mask then. If that's the case, then he really can't be mistaken. And? What was the defendant doing, standing in front of his own room? I think if I press this spot again, now that we know about the tip, we can find out some more information. So, I'm gonna press it again. Uh... At first? What do you mean by that? I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um... Why did I think that, Mr. Wright? Uh, how am I supposed to know? Hey, wait a second. Actually, Mr. Powers, only a few mi minutes ago you stated... Um... You know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip-giving incident itself? Ah, yeah, that's it. You really know your job. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? This bellboy, he wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean about the bellboy, right? Matt gave the bellboy a tip. Um, press. So, he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Uh, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. How much it was? That's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket. And that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't follow at all. It sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of these shocking moments I should ask about. Let's talk about the face first. What was so shocking about the bellboy's face, Mr. Powers? We do have to ask about both of these things, but face first. Well, he wasn't exactly a boy, more like an old Gramps. Ahem, <laughs> I hope you know that discrimination towards old men is a no-no in my court. N no, no, that's not what I meant at all. In the smack middle of the guy's face, there was a line of stitches. A line of stitches? Yeah, they went straight from the tippy top of his head to the bottom of his chin. Almost as if that thread... Like if that thread snapped, all the stuff in his head would come spilling out. Ah! He was there, at on guard's house. He was that butler! <gasps> what is it, Mr. Wright? Uh, uh, nothing, Your Honor. So that means on guard was talking with the killer then. If that fact would be exposed, on guard would be declared guilty in a blink. Phoenix, you have to play dumb here. Pretend you don't know anything. Yes, Chief. You sure you don't have anything you would like to say, Mr. Wright? Huh? Um, what are you to say, Your Honor? <sighs> nothing, Mr. Wright. Nothing. We're just going around and around in circles. Now then, Mr. Powers, please continue with your testimony. Okay, so we need to press that spot again and ask about the tip as well, because both of these things are important. I will fast forward because we just saw this. Uh, 
shouldn't take too long. There we go. The defendant is a huge star. He can afford to give generous tips, wouldn't you agree? Um, sure. But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much? Would you please clarify to the, for the court about how much would you say the defendant gave to the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really, really fat roll of cash. A roll of cash? <laughs> Ah, well, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash. That can hardly be called a tip, Your Honor. Hmm. The judge is beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. Objection! The defendant is a superstar. That kind of tip is typical fair for people like him. Objection! Are you saying that all superstars are super spenders? If I could receive large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on trays, then why on earth would I stand around here prosecuting? He's got a point. I even get paid, let alone rolls of cash, for all my hard work. Hmm, so supposing that roll of cash was not a tip, then what was it? Payment, Your Honour. Payment? Isn't it obvious? For the murder of Mr. Juan Corridor. Then... Then the bellboy the witness saw? Yes, he was the assassin. Uh, hold your horses now. Mr. Edgeworth, you don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honour? I have here the card Shelley De Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelley... The killer. He is the person the police's special investigations team has been chasing for ages. I am certain that the person the witness saw was this very assassin, Shelley De Killer. R really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head, and I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually, I saw that bellboy again later on that night. What? Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Right away. The second time. This time I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when that bellboy I saw, bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Corridor's room. Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean... Thank you very much, that is all we need for now. Huh? But I'm not done, there's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. De Killer. then we shall see. Hmm, so the bellboy came out of the victim's room, and if that bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. Ha, 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 ha. This is no laughing matter. The second time. Okay, so we want to ask about the bellboy being suspicious, I believe. So we want to skim forward to here. Um... So what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damaging thing he's gonna say next? Um, well, the bellboy was empty-handed? Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart and he wasn't holding a tray either. You'd call that a little strange too, wouldn't you? Hmm, I agree that it is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers test me slide, or... I'm gonna try to pull a fast one. There is nothing strange or unusable, unusual about an empty-handed bellboy. But there really, really is. There really, really isn't. 
If you two are done being school children, bellboys are for room service. There is no reason for them to be empty handed, ever. Your Honor, I ask that the witness's previous statement be supplanted with this new one. Er, Hedgeworth. Are you gonna do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious? I see. Very well, this court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. E yes, sir. Okay, so there's an obvious reason why the bellboy came out of the room empty-handed, right? Because he was delivering that, like, tomato juice to the room, and he left the tray in there. So, when he left the room, he would logically be empty-handed. So, I'm just gonna do a quick save, because I could be wrong. <laughs> and then we're gonna try presenting this tomato juice. I believe it's this, this um, glass that we use. Objection! Yeah, music stopped, we're good. Mr. Powers. Y yes You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches, and, and... So? A baseball has stitches. Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? <laughs> well, there's also, I mean, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. This is the crime scene. There is a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Corridor's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is on top of the table in the lower right corner here... Anyone can clearly see that it is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Corridor's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Ah! But, but... That would mean the bellboy had seen and left a dead body in the room. Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Corridor was already dead at that time? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes? Uh, I blame you for leading me down this route. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? I is there? The bellboy was empty-handed. Or should I say, empty-hand-ed? I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Huh? W what That bellboy, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry, it slipped my mind. Ugh, boy, does this make the bellboy look really suspicious. Alright, gotta focus. I can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright, that bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So, a football is made of leather. Are you saying that all footballs are suspicious because they are made of leather? this case. <laughs> but that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Ugh. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh, yes. Please tell us more. Okay. Their second meeting. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door. Just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left, without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the, def to the defendant's room? 
Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident? I'd say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm... I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Their second meeting. Uh, I think I want to know what the something is. I said hold it. Um, okay. That's better. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> What kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh, um, okay. Hmm, I should probably ask him only one question at a time. So who took this something the bellboy handed off? Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. Well, it was Mr. Ongard's room, correct? So it could only have been Mr. Ongard himself, I'd say. And then, what did the bellboy do after that? Oh, so after he gave the person inside the room the thing... Okay, we're gonna press here again to find out about what the thing is. <laughs> Just do a quick fast forward. He gave something to this person? Yeah. And what was this something? <laughs> if I remember what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something, would I? But this implies that something is removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. I would like to summarize the test me up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honour. I think this is of the utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm... Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy handed off. Um, well, let's see. Hmm, I think it was... no. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. I yes, sir. If I saw it again, I could say for sure, but I think it was some kind of wooden statue. Okay, I think we probably know what it is at this point. It's this wooden statue. What was the point of that pregnant pause? Where'd that objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh, it was me, Your Honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is gonna happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Y yes Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix, deep breath. Mr. Powers, the something you saw. Was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That's the something. Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. Hmm, I recall we found this at Matt Ongard's mansion. A at the, the defendant's house? What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelley the Killer assassinated Juan Corrida in his room. And then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then the bear being found at Mr. Ongard's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt Ongard is the killer's client. Order, order, order! I said order! Mr. Wright, this is a most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's alright. Your judgement was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you, if you hadn't shown to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. 
Ah, I almost forgot that he knew about it too. Hmm. I think it is clear that there is no need for us to continue this trial. I... I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Y yes, Mr. Wright? There are still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. Alright, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? Uh, I think the person who received the bear is questionable. Because if it were Matt, then how would the bear have gotten to his mansion before... Because he got arrested from the hotel, he wouldn't have had time to go home. Maybe it's the bear itself, though, I forget. I'm gonna put a save down, because I can't remember. Uh, there we go. And then we're gonna go with this one and see. There was one thing in Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear. And that is the identity of the person who received the bear. He gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear. We can't be sure of- Ah! Hmm? 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 What is it, Mr. Powers? If you're gonna scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Actually, so, I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm, but, but, the arm. It was the Nickel Samurai's arm. I swear it. <gasps> You've got to be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. Order, order. It looks like you've dug your own grave. Yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So the person who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And, as we all know, Matt on guard is the Nickel Samurai. I mean, maybe. Thanks to the defense, we've made that all the clearer. What am I supposed to do now? Mia, help! You don't have time to act lost. You've got to find another angle to attack this from. Hurry! Now, I'll bring this cross-examination to... Your Honor. Again, Mr. Wright? We've already removed any and all questionable areas of this testimony. It's about time you were removed from this court, Mr. Wright. I have to find something. Even one more little point will do. There are... there are still questions left unanswered. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. Alright, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? Uh, I think I can't pick person who received the bear, because even though we know it's the Nickel Samurai, which could be Adrian because we know she was wearing a Nickel Samurai costume, uh, I think we picked the bear itself. I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear? Mr. Wright? This was found at Mr. Ongard's mansion. However, Mr. Ongard was arrested at the hotel that night. This is the point I was trying to make by saying the person who received the bear was suspicious. This is this is exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh. I think Your Honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that it was Mr. Ongar who took this bear to his mansion. Why, that's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Phew. Disaster averted, it looks. You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at On Guard's mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler, all this time, he was the killer. 
Da Killer and On Guard were working together, so to speak, and Da Killer was hiding at On Guard Mansion as its butler. What a bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to On Guard Mansion by Da Killer himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, On Guard had him do so. I assume because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. That's too much, man. Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. As well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client, who hired the assassin to commit the murder, was Mr. Matt Ongard. I see no reason for this trial to continue, therefore I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honour, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? I will now announce my ver- There is only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at the On Guard Mansion. However, it's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I am saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. The real client? Yes. Tisk tisk. Is this all you have? Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the killer's real client, and therefore the real murderer? I hate to have to do this to her, but it's the only way we're going to win the case. I mean, save Maya, really. Adrian Andrews. Take that! Adrian Andrews? Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt on guard for the crime. By wearing a spare nickel samurai costume. Ah! Then, then the nickel samurai's arm that I saw, that could have very well been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. Ongard? If you were pleased to recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figure at Mr. Ongard's mansion, it was a well-laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Hmm. What is with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell On Guard did it. I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin the guilt onto someone else. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something petty, it's murder of all things. This is to save Maya. This is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Order, order, order. All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor. For the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it strange and wondered. Why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specially bring that bear to on guard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, 
the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honour. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. I see. Well then, the court will take a short ten minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honour. March 23rd, 11.54am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. <laughs> oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought it in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt onto Adrian. Ugh, I swear this demon will pay. M Mr. Nick. Pearls? Where's Mia? I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. A really strong power? Oh, Mr. Nick, your phone is... It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Y yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to latch onto. Phew, that's good, pal. And what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where the killer and Maya are? Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but... What? We don't have any more time. If we just have one, even a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself. Thinking to myself, I've got to keep the trial going until Maya's been rescued. But have I just run out of luck this time? Is all I hope for naught? A tent. Huh? A tent? I could see a circus tent. M Mia! It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a, just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. This little room right now. But I could see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. Gumshoe. Is there a circus in town right now? There's only one, pal. The very big circus. Maya is somewhere within a 300 foot radius of the main tent. What? Okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map, about a 300 foot radius from the main tent. Hurry! <laughs> and... And? I can see a mailbox under the window, just outside. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. Hmm, okay, what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. It felt like I was in an old office building? Maybe the third floor or so? I heard her. An old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Beep. Mia, Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Come, Shu, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. March 23rd, 12.05pm, District Court, courtroom number 3. Court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You have seen it before? That's right, it's only natural the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secrets? Alright. Why... why does she... The bear figurine. Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. 
at its center is a small cavity with just enough room to just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. So this figurine, it's a container of sorts, is it? Yes. Looks to be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is superb craftsmanship. Craftsmanship. Oh yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Looks like there really was something to that bear after all. Okay, so the question now is, what's inside the bear, right? And how do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then, this... this was a present from you? That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be perfect for Schwan. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. So, who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only the two of us, Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland. So I doubt there are that many people with this same bear in this country. But this looks like it'd be easily broken. Especially if someone wanted to get at what's inside. Well, it's a toy. But it can never be the same again once it's been broken. Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or jewellery box? I never told anyone. And as long as Juan never told anyone either, only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? Then of course that means Mr. Ongar didn't know, right? We didn't know anything about this figurine. So we should try to find out more for now. Yeah, I'll keep pressing her for more information. A puzzle? That's right. Hmm. But it looks like an ordinary figurine. True enough. To people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a puzzle. So, what kind of puzzle is this exactly? So you can take it apart? And how would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right and then push it in. Oh, yes, I see. After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Ooh, this is most interesting. A boy in his new toy. It's like he's five all over again. Oh, don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. I think this is about all I'm gonna get for now. Figurine updated in the court record. Well, Mr. Wright, I think even you have come to realize that there is one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. This bear is actually a jewelry box. Hmm. Now that we have agreed to this point, there is only one logical question that could come next, and that is this. What is inside this box? What's inside? That's right. That's what we are going to find out next. Witness. Yes? You are the only one who can open this. Please. There's a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. All eyes are on Miss Andrews now as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. Click. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? What is that? It looks like a note. <gasps> I don't think we need to guess at what that is, do we, Mr. Wright? It's the suicide note. The suicide note? The suicide note left by Juan Corridor's former manager, Celeste Inpax. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts, but just as we suspected, it was hidden. 
hidden by the victim, Juan Corrida himself. It seems Celeste Impacts had very beautiful handwriting. And she and she just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Her order! Witness, did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. But I couldn't find it anywhere. Because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Ed Mr. Edgeworth's pace. So now that the suicide note has been found, what's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right. At least, that's what I would think. Now then, I believe it's only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much to get my hands on it. And I was going to burn it, for her sake. Sweetie. Adrian, you're a sweetheart and I love you. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you, you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of the note aloud. Very well. The judge's voice rang loud and clear through the deathly silent courtroom. In her note, Celeste Impacts left to us a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and then thrown away by On Guard. About being engaged to Corridor and On Guard's role in destroying that. And about how she decided in her despair to end it all. And that's all Miss Impacts had to say. There is one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. On Guard. Then, what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Schwarm was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. My word. Mad on guard values, above all else, his refreshing like a spring breeze image. Which is why he had to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. Celeste's suicide note added to the court record. On guard's fault the woman killed herself. And this time he even went so far as to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. Terrible, what a selfish person. I guess there are slime ball lawyers out there who'll defend these creeps too. There is no room for doubt here. Mr. DeKiller's client's goal was to obtain this suicide note. And the only person who needed this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. It seems that we have come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. Ugh, how am I supposed to escape from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Gumshoe hasn't called yet, so you know what you must do. I know, I have to carry you on and buy him some more time. Okay, there are two deadly pieces of evidence, the figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of this situation through one of those. Gavel is already in the judge's hand. Phoenix, hurry! Suicide note of the figurine. Which one of these should I pursue? Uh, I think it's the note. I'm gonna throw down a save. Objection! Please wait, Your Honor. Oh man, look at that lawyer. He's still going at it? It's like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. I think Your Honor believes that Matt Ongard killed Nautis in order to obtain this note. Yes, that is correct. But that seems a little strange. In fact, I think there is a contradiction here. This note was hidden by Mr. Corridor until the night of the murder. If that is the case, I say that Matt Ongard could not have known what was written on this note. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Exactly. 
but I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. No one in their right mind would kill for a note without first knowing what it said. Order, order, order! Y you make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. H huh? The defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It is a very small video camera, Your Honor. This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. S spying? What the? I thought that spy camera was in my possession. Madonga and the victim both thought of the, of the other as their biggest rival. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weaknesses. And? The victim, Juan Corridor, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt on guard. Order! Order! Ahem, Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor? You don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well, sort of? Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you are confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have the camera that was in the stuff bear's eye. But this camera that I have is not that same one. Last night, I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this. Gumshoe's bug sweeper? By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Matt Ongard's fingerprints were on there? Well, Phoenix. It looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Ongard learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. It got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey, now what's that lawyer thinking? Mommy, is that man the bad killer guy? Shut up, stop, don't look at him. Why he's sweating is just so ugh, nasty. Phoenix. Yes, Chief? Have you figured out what you're going to do next yet? What I'm gonna do next? Does running away like a frightened child work? I know it seems like Mr. Edgeworth is very close to putting the lid on this case. But in his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. Well, what is it, Mia? There is a piece of evidence that he really should investigate. Something he should investigate? I would really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded for not remembering to look into the item when he had the chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? Alright, I think this time we finally understand everything. Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that Mia is talking about? Can I figure out what it is that still needs to be looked at, or should I let it go? Uh, what is it? When he had the chance. Hmm. I'm not sure what it is. I've, I've forgotten. Um. I'll try, I'll, I'm gonna save and try choosing no objections to see if it gives me more hints because I'm not sure. I have no objections to Ongar getting his guilty sentence as he should, but I can't let that happen yet. Mia said there's still something worth examining. If she thinks so, then even if I have to force it, I must find something to bring up. I have an objection, Your Honor. Hmm. That was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Objection! <laughs> Your Honor. The defense has no intention of letting this go so easily. You're beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? So, you're telling me that I forgot something? 
You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. But there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. I think it might be the note. I think it's the note. That is Miss Impact's a suicide note, right? Hmm. Who knows? I mean, sure, this suicide note was found inside this bear, but if this bear was in my possession until only a few moments ago... Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note has yet to be analysed. Oh. So, as to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impacts or not, that has yet to be even remotely confirmed. Mr. Wright, you can't seriously be suggesting. Mr. Wright, you... are you saying this suicide note is a fake? Miss Andrews, you were the one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. Ongard. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into this bear? Uh, how dare you! Yeah, leave her alone, God. Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There is no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could solve the puzzle is the witness herself. Ah! Miss Andrews. You wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Matt on guard. I... I did no such thing. Right, if you're going to pronounce this suicide note a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your theory. Mr. Edgeworth, you were the one who presented this scrap of paper as evidence. That means the burden of proof lies with you at the prosecution. That's enough. Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on the suicide note? It is as the defense has stated, the handwriting has yet to be analysed. If that's the case, it seems that yet again we have reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Imposs- That's impossible. This isn't good, Phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. I didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defence further investigate. And for analysis, my butt, that's just the lawyer trying to buy more time. One guy is guilty. Look, any idiot can tell you that. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty. 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 What is that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello, Gumshoe? <sighs> What's with him? I'm also with that side. Where's Maya? What happened to the kid? What happened to the killer? He, uh. He got away. What? I'm sorry, pal. I really am. I don't know what to say. Besides, I'm sorry. I wish there was some way to make it up to you. I really do. Anyway, what's going on? We found his hideout, pal. But the two of them are already gone. This is terrible. I'm gonna keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry. I just need a little more time. But... Don't tell me we don't... We don't have any more? Guilty. 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 Do you hear that? They're calling for his head! Mr. Wright, I can't... for us to come this far and... Oh! W what is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, I can't do that! Mr. Wright, would you please get a hold of yourself? Y yes Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch! Mr. Edgeworth? 
please, you've got to buy us some more time. Court is in session. Beep. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying? Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I am reluctant to do this. However, it appears that I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. I... this time I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Please wait, Your Honor. Uh, Edgeworth? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I humbly request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary tests on this piece of evidence in that time. Hmm. But can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, Your Honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourn today and then reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes. Please, Your Honor. That's all I'm asking for. Please, Your Honor. Very well. At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30 minute recess. But be advised that I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. March 23rd, 2.04pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 3. Right, well, what's going on with Maya's situation? The killer, it looks like he got away again. 30 minutes? We can't find her in that time. Mm. Report. Ah, is that Mr. Edgeworth? We don't have time, just spit it out. R right. Looks like we just missed them, sir. But Dekiller left a few things behind by accident and rushed to get away. A few things? Can we use any of them as evidence? Ho ho ho, I thought you'd ask, pal. I've got the things you left with me right now and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. We didn't have time to wait for those guys, sir. When those guys weren't looking, I swiped the stuff and ran. What? Wait, what? <laughs> well, I'm not a detective anymore, so I had to. I'm really sorry, sir, but I've got to put the law on hold for now. Hell yeah. Be gay to crimes. Sounds bad. I hope you haven't getting too much trouble over this. With my hunk of junk car, I say I'll be there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. Oh, alright, just get here in one piece. I'm on a mission and no one can stop me now, sir. No one! I'm pulling out all the stops and running every red light! Items left by the murderer, huh? Maybe there's something among them that will be decisive enough to end this. <gasps> hey, what's wrong? Detective Gumshoe, answer me! No one can stop... me. What happened? It sounded like he had an accident. I'm guessing his cell phone broke as well. What was he thinking? We've got to hurry and call for help. We have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken, and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Also, if we don't get to those items before they do, the police will take possession of them. No, we can't let that happen. Well, if there is a way we can find out where he is, then we stand a chance. Why or oh why did Gumshoe have to get into an accident now? Is there any way to find out exactly where he is at this moment? There is a way. That's right, there is a way! What? How? I'm sure we can find out where Detective Gumshoe is through this. Franziska Von Karma. Why are you bringing up Franziska at a time like... Oh, I see. I'll try to get in contact with her. The chances are slim, but she's all we have. Franziska. Will she even want to help us? Edgeworth. What is it? 
I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty, but what I'm doing now, I'm pinning the guilt onto someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say, defense attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right. It doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, that can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict. Is Prosecutor Edgeworth here? Yes, Bailiff. There's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. I probably finished with the handwriting analysis. I have to go take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is you must do. To be continued. This case is amazing. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, yeah, next time... Part 4-2 trial. Look forward to it. And thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.